Hi everyone, this is Lisa Dickinson, Garden Girl at Two Peas, and I'd like to welcome you to the first installment of Storytellers, a video series that will delve into the many tools and techniques we use to tell our stories. Today I'm sharing a page that uses an infographic to tell the highlights of my family's past year. I'll explain to you exactly what an infographic is, and I'll show you how it can be used to creatively display journaling and incorporate a lot of fun scrapping supplies. An infographic is a graphic visual representation of information. You've probably seen infographics on posters, in magazines, and online to help convey facts and data in a visually appealing way. This year, I used an infographic on our holiday cards. One side featured the family photo, and the other had several highlights from our past year. Rather than just type out these in sentences or paragraph form, I used a variety of fonts and small clip art icons to display all the various things that we accomplished in 2013. This is something you can do in most word processing programs just by creating different text boxes for each font and then arranging the words together in groups. My layout today is inspired by this card and I plan to use these little groups of text along with our family photo to document our highlights of the year. But rather than use the clip art that's on, on my card, I'm planning to use die cuts and lots of little embellishments along with the text. And together they'll create a dimensional infographic. Because my page is going to contain a lot of text and small graphic elements, I've opted to print my photo in black and white. I'm planning to use a lot of pattern and color in the infographic, and I think a colored photo might be too challenging to work with. So I've pulled out some papers to consider. And these selections were based on the January mood board that inspired many of the Garden Girl projects from last week. You can see it has a winter palette, lots of soft grays and cool blues. There's a few warmer tones like coral and red. The textures include wood grain and sweater knits. And I'm using that as my starting point for products on this page. My idea is to use this 5 by 7 photo on the top half of the layout and then incorporate all the little highlights from the year on the bottom half. I pulled out some different papers that had the wintry feel of the mood board and I'd like to find two patterns that will work together and use one on the top half of the page and one on the bottom half. Since I'm going to be printing out some of my text on the background, I need that pattern to be light enough that the ink will show up. So it needs to be fairly simple without a lot of contrast, just so you'll be able to read the printing. I think this gray wood grain might be too dark, but this one from my mind's eye is a little bit lighter and it should allow my printing to show up. I also really like it paired with the B side of this October afternoon paper. It's got these clocks in teal on the other side. But it's a simple crosshatch pattern and it looks good behind my photo and it ties into the gray on the bottom half. So my next step is going to be arranging all of the little groups of text from the back of the Christmas card to fit across the 6 by 12 area on my layout. This step required a bit of planning, so I've used my computer to help me arrange all these elements on the page. I've used the same text from my holiday card, but I replaced many of the clip art graphics with two-piece cut files. The software I'm using is Illustrator, which I know isn't a common program that most scrapbookers have, but I believe you could do something similar in the Silhouette software by using their print and cut feature. You just delete your cut files before you send it to the printer and then you cut them out individually after you've printed out your text. So now you can see I've printed my word art on this wood grain background and there are some gaps that I will fill in later with the die cuts. But first I'm going to finish the background by using this lighter paper on the top half. I'm just going to trim it down to about six inches tall and then I'll go ahead and adhere it to the top edge of my layout. So I've adhered that down and when I position my photo here it will leave room for my title over here. My next step is to cut out the various shapes that will go with my text to make the infographic. They will help make all these little text blurbs look like separate groups and create a chart-like graph that will be really fun and colorful. 
So I've gone ahead and cut out the files that I selected to include in the infographic. And all of these shapes were cut from papers that are in the Hey Boy paper pad from Basic Gray. It has a good selection of aquas, grays, and oranges, and it matched the mood board. So they're going to bring a lot of fun color and pattern to my layout. I'll grab my page base here. And as I mentioned earlier, I want to position the photo here on the left, leaving room for my title on the right. And since I planned out the bottom half on my computer, I know where each one of these shapes will go. So I can just start getting them in place. This little frame is going to go right there. And I know it shakes the camera every time I apply adhesive, so I won't do that on all of these, but I will lay them out where they go so you can see how this design is taking shape. The slide frames are nice to create a border around my different text groups and really section them off. And then I've chosen other icons that go with the text, like the mountains for the skiing and camping, and the waves to highlight my son's swimming race. Okay, I've adhered all of the die cuts, and you can see there's still a few blank spots left in my infographic. There's the interior of this frame, and this one as well, and then down here. And those are spots that were filled with numbers on my Christmas card, and now I'm going to fill them in with stickers. I've grabbed some thickers that coordinate with my colors. I've got an aqua, a glitter white, and a coral set and I'm going to fill in those spots with their corresponding numbers. This frame up here is for Hayden's 12th birthday. So I'm just going to put a 1 and a 2 in there. And then this one down here was for Mike's 40th birthday. So I'll fill that in with these white letters. And I love that the thickers add some dimension to what is really a relatively flat design. Then I have a two over here for the two kittens that we adopted this fall. Now I'm thinking about how to fill this space with my title. And because this layout features all of our highlights of 2013, I'm just going to keep it simple and title my layout the very obvious highlights of 2013. <laughs> but I really like to mix different fonts and lettering in my titles. I originally had pulled out these October afternoon chipboard letters, but I'd like the title to have more color than just this gray. So what I did was to die cut part of my title out of aqua patterned paper. I've got the word lights. And then I thought I would add the high part out of these chipboard letters. The word lights is die cut from the same basic gray paper pad the Hey Boy, and so it blends in well with the other die cuts. And this particular font is called Bramble, and it's a free download if you Google it. I like how that is looking with the mix of a blocky font and a script. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere my title permanently, and then grab some embellishments to finish off this page. Alrighty, I grabbed a few products that I think will work for the final little details on this page. I have a few two-piece shaped paper clips and this 2013 flare button. I have some pearl gems that have the gray and winter whites, and they're from Studio Calico. And these are brads from Prima that are actually Christmassy, but they have the cream and aqua and soft reds that work with my color palette. And I also have these puffy heart stickers from Skipping Five in a gray wood grain. I'm going to use these embellishments to fill in some of the obvious blank spots on my page that just need a little something. I grabbed this 2013 flare button 
since it has the year on it, I think it would be great to incorporate into my title just to reinforce that this page is about important events of the year. And then I am thinking about using some of these clips in this place right here because it's just a bit bare, but I'm not sure which one. I kind of like that white star since it ties into the stars that are cut out of the circle. Then I think I'll start adding some of these brads in places that just need a little bit of sparkle and shine, like here above Riley's theater debut. There's a spot for something. There's a brad on here that has music notes, and that ties in nicely with the theater theme. So I think I might stick that one there. Then the center of this flower is an obvious spot where you could put a brad. And this one is a red one that would add a little bit of texture there. I'm thinking down in this corner it might be nice to have a little color like the aqua from the title since that color is kind of scattered around elsewhere. This first brad has an ampersand and this one has a geotag which goes along nicely with the camping and travel blurb. There are also some brads on this card that spell out Xmas and I'm think, thinking the one with the M on it would be perfect as a little monogram in the middle of this star since the text relates to my husband Mike. I think that these puffy stickers might work down here by the two little cats. It's just a subtle little touch. And then maybe another one just to fill this space next to the 12. And now for these gems, I think they would be great to fill in some little circles, like the center of the camera die cut. That fits in pretty perfectly. And I think a few of the smaller ones might work clustered with this larger brad inside that frame. These little ones are, whoops, really tiny. <laughs> If I can get them to cooperate, I will stick them down here. There we go. And maybe one more just to make it a group of three. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm considering adding a little bit of machine stitching just for the texture and tactile element that it adds. Maybe a few rows um, underneath these waves or over here on this frame. So I'm going to adhere the embellishments and add that stitching, and then I will show you the page after that. Okay, everything's been adhered, and then I added some stitching in a few places. Underneath the waves, and as well up on this frame, and then some zigzag stitching in a couple of places. I also stitched down the star clip. This is a great solution if you want to use a shaped clip somewhere on your layout, but you don't really have anything to clip it to. Now one thing I'm noticing that I'd like to see on this design is a border around everything just to contain it, give it a definite edge, and kind of finish it off. So I've grabbed a few sheets of cardstock in black and aqua, and I've got enough on a, of a margin on this design just to trim a little bit off, maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch, and add a solid border. I'm just considering which color might work better the black, or maybe the aqua. And honestly, I'm thinking that a double mat, maybe with just a really thin line of black, and then matted on the aqua, might be the best option. So yeah, you can kind of get an idea of how it would look on these two sides. And I think that's what the page needs. So to finish it off and make it look really sharp, I'm going to trim it down and then just mat it. And then I'll show you the completed page. So here's the layout all finished. And you can see I added a thin border of black before matting it on the aqua. 
I think it makes a nice frame for my colorful infographic and it really finishes off the page. Thanks so much for joining me for the new Storytellers video series. For more videos, scrapbook supplies, and inspiration, be sure to check out twopeasinabucket.com.